everybody. Welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah and here it is dinner time again and I'm running a little bit behind. There's a great recipe I'm going to fix tonight and I wanted to bring you along because I've gotten a lot of requests to make things and show you what to do with venison as well as what to do with all of these canned goods uh, that I've been doing all summer long, everything from the garden and some of our meat and broth. And so today I'm going to show you an awesome recipe to throw together pretty much in a hurry. But I'm also going to back up a little bit and show you or tell you some alternatives for venison um, and some other things that maybe not everybody has around the homestead. But I'm hoping that this video and this recipe will encourage you to start canning your vegetables canning some meat, and canning broth. So let's get started. So what I'm making for dinner tonight is beef stew, but actually it's venison stew. It's just full of vegetables and full of things that we have raised, uh, grown, and canned on the homestead. We're gonna start off by chopping a bunch of vegetables and putting them in my Instant Pot. Now, I'm using an Instant Pot today, but this recipe can also be used in a crock pot or cooked right on the stove top. So if you don't have an Instant Pot yet at home, uh, don't worry about it. This is easily transferable. So I'm gonna get chopping some of these vegetables. We're going to chop up three potatoes, two ribs of celery, and two uh, large carrots. So for these potatoes, I'm not even gonna peel them. I think they taste just as good. And the piece sizes, I'm gonna make, I don't know, a half inch by an inch. I just think that's a good eating size. Not too big, not too small. We're just gonna put these right in the Instant Pot. For this celery, I'm just going to slice it in half lengthwise and then cut it into about half inch pieces. Two celery ribs. And for the carrots, I'm just going to cut them um, into nice little carrot coins. Uh, these are organic carrots and so I'm not even worried about keeping like the peel on it. Uh, we don't mind and it really isn't, I don't think, necessary to peel them. It's just more work. On our homestead, we do grow onions, but they just don't last very long unless we chop them up and put them in the freezer. So I am using some of our frozen onions today. I'm going to put, I don't know, a half a cup to maybe even a cup's worth down in here, but it's probably the equivalent of um, a medium onion. So chop that up and put that in there, and I'm just going to dump. From here, it's pretty easy. I'm gonna add one quart of venison broth, but if you don't have venison broth, you can use beef broth. Really any kind of red meat broth. You can get this at the store, the beef broth, if you don't have it uh, from home. And I'm going to add two pints of tomato sauce. This is our home canned tomato sauce from our garden tomatoes this past summer. And I'm also going to add one pint of canned uh, venison meat. Now, if you haven't uh, tried canning meat, I really encourage you to get a pressure canner and get uh, your courage uh, to can meat because it is very wonderful. It's versatile, it's quick, it makes easy meals. Uh, and then you don't have to also worry about power failure if you have everything in your freezer. We have lots in our freezer, uh, but we also do can quite a bit of meat. Now, if you don't have canned meat for this recipe, you could use ground beef, ground venison, uh, ground lamb, turkey, chicken, whatever. Uh, you can put that in here, or any kind of stew meat. Uh, you would add that right now. It's your preference whether you would want to brown that stew meat before you put it into the pot. You could put it in just raw. So I'm gonna put this uh, one pint of our canned venison meat right in the pot. Now we just need to add some spices. Okay, we're gonna start with the equivalent of three cloves of garlic. I'm using minced garlic uh, to be honest, cause I'm lazy. I don't feel like 
<laughs> peeling the cloves and that kind of thing. So I'm just using some jarred stuff and one uh, teaspoon of oregano leaves. We're out of our wild oregano, darn it. I need to collect more next spring. We're gonna put in about a half a teaspoon of uh, ground black pepper. And I'm gonna put in almost a teaspoon of uh, salt, of this pink Himalayan salt. But you need to be really careful, especially if you're buying your ingredients at the store. Broth sometimes is very high in sodium. Canned meat can be very high in sodium and those kinds of things. I actually don't put any salt in any of my canning so that when I get to this point, I can season it however I want to. We love this pink Himalayan salt. Uh, I order it in bulk 10 pounds at a time uh, through Amazon. And if you're interested in knowing more about that, you can check it out on our uh, Amazon shop. The last seasoning ingredient I'm gonna be putting in is a bay leaf. And these are bay leaves from one of our subscribers. Now we've had two subscribers send us bay leaves fresh from their trees on their own homesteads. And I am so grateful to have these and not have to buy them at the store uh, for a while. Anyway, thank you so much. So I'm just gonna mix this around. And on my Instant Pot, I'm going to set this using the manual mode, and we're gonna cook it for 35 minutes. If you're doing this in your crock pot, you can do this on low for 68 hours or on high for three to four hours. If you're doing it on the, cook, on the stove top, bring it up to a boil, and then cover it and simmer for probably 45 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna make sure that the pressure regulator is in the sealed position. I'm just gonna press manual and I'm going to put it up to 35 minutes. And on the instant pot, you just need to leave it alone and it will start. After this is done cooking for the 35 minutes, we're gonna let the pressure come down on its own for 10 minutes and then we're gonna do a quick, quick release of the pressure. I have one more vegetable to go in that's actually a canned vegetable. Uh, there are some extras you can put in. This is really versatile, uh, but they're not going to go in until the end so they don't just fall apart and get totally mushy. So we'll be back when this is done cooking. In the meantime, uh, to go along with our stew, Grace is going to make some baking powder drop biscuits. There are just a couple more things that we need to add. While it is hot and bubbly, I'm going to add a combination of two tablespoons of cornstarch, some non-GMO cornstarch, and two mixed with two tablespoons of water. And that is going to thicken that up really nicely. Stir that in there. And as a final touch for our dinner, I'm gonna actually add some of our home canned green beans that we grew in the garden. 
Uh, I'm not sure if I'll add the full thing, but I'll add at least half of this. And then the kids will eat the rest up um, as a snack. Or we can have it in our lunch tomorrow. Another addition uh, that would go nicely in here would be some canned peas or frozen peas. I like to keep the canned vegetables until the end so that they don't completely fall apart in the uh, cooking process. But you know what? I think there's room for the rest of this in here. We're just going to have lots of veggies in our stew tonight. So that is completely done. Grace's biscuits are done. We just need to serve us a bowl and a plate. So this is a pretty exciting dinner. Hey, I wanted to show you guys something that one of our subscribers sent us. It is a, like a pot holder that I can use to take things out of the oven and things like that. It is super cool, but it didn't have a name. We have no idea who it's from. So if you are the awesome person that sent this to us, please let us know so we can give you a proper thank you. So let's get this served up. It is time for dinner and we are hungry. You guys, I hope you give this recipe a try, whether it's with venison or beef or whatever other kind of meat that you love, give it a try. I also encourage you, like I said before, to uh, think about canning some of your garden veggies this year, maybe some meat, some broth. Um, I really think you will love it. Hey, if this is the first time that you are at our channel and you love this video and you're enjoying it, right now is a perfect time to hit the subscribe button below. Don't forget to check us out on all of our social media, including Instagram. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.